church. Praise God. There's nothing better than freedom and liberty in God. Amen. You know, Jesus said that's one of the reasons that he came was to set people free. Amen. Jesus doesn't, he doesn't want us bound up in any kind of bondage or uh, anything. He wants us free to, to worship him. He wants us free to serve him. He wants us free to live life and enjoy life. Amen. You know, um, what causes the world to think they don't want anything to do with God sometimes, there's other things, but some, one of the reasons that, that people don't, you know, worldly people don't want anything to do with the church or God is because they don't see any life in it. It's because they, they, it looks like a prison to them. It looks like, why would I show up and do that on Sunday, I got better things to do. I can be at the lake, right? This is how worldly people think. Why would I show up in there, have to get up, shower, dress up, look nice, go in there and play the part, right? And, you know, why would I do that, right? But that's when, when it's just religious or it's just dead, it's just a routine. It's just a hobby. It's just that, well, I've got to do this. Right? But no, that's not freedom. It's not freedom. Coming to the house of God, being in God's presence, being at home in his presence, being at home in his word should be freedom. It should bring liberty. It should bring joy. Amen? Amen. God wants his people filled with joy. Amen. Man, I tell you, I don't like depression. I don't like, I don't like feeling bad. I don't like, I'm a bit spoiled on this joy thing. I like the joy of the Lord. Amen. I don't, I would hate to know that I had to be a Christian and live like some prune that, well, I go to church. I love God. I'm involved in this church. Dead and dry. No, God's not like that. He's filled with life. He's filled with expression. He's filled with joy. His presence should make us alive. It should put some joy in our heart, a smile on our face. Amen. It should, the joy of God ought to just, just, well, just keep, stay welled up on the inside of you to where it just sustains you all the time. Amen. You just you're going through something, but you might be going through something, but it's it's almost like you're not. Do you know what I mean? That's what the joy of the Lord does for you. You're dealing with things, but it's almost like, oh, well, Lord, I got all these issues, and these things are coming up this week and next month. But hey, praise God, you're God. It's going to be all right. I'm still here. You know how many times in my life I've looked back, I've done this. I, I, when I say these things to you, I mean this with all my heart. I really do this. There's times in my life I'll look and I'll go, God, you know, I'm worried about next week. And I was worried about this a year ago. And I'm still here. You've still sustained me. You've still taken care of me. You're still on the throne. I'm still your son. You still love me. I'm still making it. You're still fellowshipping with me. You're still walking with me. You're still taking care of me. That joy does that for you. That joy, your mind tries to get off in all these places and worry and be concerned and be in bondage, right? But that's not the spirit of God. Bondage and fear and worry is not the spirit of God. And we have to catch ourselves and make sure that we don't let that stuff settle on us. Amen. We have to teach that to our children when they're little. Hey, get that look off your face. It's all right. Quit frowning, quit pouting, you'll be all right. Why? We are not going to let them settle into that. And God doesn't want us to settle into that. Amen. The Bible says, God says in 1 John 3, 20, I believe it is, if, if our heart condemns us, God's greater than that. If your heart's beating you up over something, God's greater than what your heart's beating you up over. Do you know that? David said, hey, I encouraged myself in the Lord. He rejoiced in the Lord. Oh, you know, pastor quotes the scripture all the time. He says, um, why are you cast down, O my soul? Hope in God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
We should never, the church should be such a bright, bright shining, joy-filled light that, that people are drawn to it. They're like, man, I'd like to be like that guy. I'd like to be like that gal. Amen. But if you're in bondage, you don't look like that. And people aren't drawn to that. Amen. I'm not drawn to miserable people. Well, that's not, sometimes I am to try to get some of the misery out of them. I try to get around them and let the grace of God get on them, try to help them, let them see, hey, man, you can smile. You know, I don't say that to them, but I try to get around them. And I'll, I'll find people that, that don't like to cut up and carry on. I'll get around them. That's exactly what I do with them. <laughs> I, I'll cut up and carry on. Let them, why? Let them, enjoy, let them learn some freedom, just trying to let the grace of God help them. Yeah. Not, not, not to show them where they're wrong and I'm right. Not that at all. Just to love on them with God's grace and his goodness and what he has to offer them. Yeah. Amen. Do you know God has the, everything you need to offer you? Right? And it's not bondage. We, man, we live clean. I'm, I'm not bragging. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. My wife, my kids, we live holy. We live clean. We live right. The best I know how. We don't have junk in our home. We don't have dirty shows in our home. We don't have filth on the TV. We don't have it on our phone. We don't have it in the home. And, but we do have joy. We do have freedom and liberty. And why do I say that? Well, because the world thinks that those, they, they live off those things. That's, they, they live, they think that's what life is. That's what enjoying life is. No, it grieves me to get around filth, trash, and filth come on my TV. I can't get the remote going fast enough. Amen? And I don't really watch anything on my TV anyway except golf, you know. Golf. That's about what I watch. The kids watch other things. Tammy watches a few of these shows. But, but we, the, walking with God, really walking with God, really having his joy indwelling in you and being holy, living holy, it produces a tremendous life. It produces the light of God. It produces, man, it's, I tell you, there's nothing like it. Amen. And God does not, would not have his children in bondage. Number one, that doesn't, he loves you more than that, than to have you in bondage. But two, it doesn't make him look too good when you claim you're, he's your father. He's like, well, why don't you act like you're mine then? Be nice to see you have a good time every now and then. Smile, enjoy life, amen, be free, Amen. Because the Bible tells us that God's given us all things richly to enjoy, not to make us miserable. <laughs> Life is not supposed to make us miserable. Amen. He wants us free to enjoy who he is, everything he's created, everything that he's given us. Right? See, we need to be convinced of that. Otherwise, you're going to live your whole life in bondages in area when there's no reason for it. We need to be convinced of this. We need to know the word of God. We need to know the God that we serve. He's not this crude, bitter God that's just waiting to smack you. <laughs> He's not. Now, sometimes he has to smack us, but he didn't want to. Right? Sometimes he has to correct us. The Bible tells us he corrects those whom he loves. Right? Sometimes I got to pop one of my children on the, the booty. But I don't, I'm, not wait, I'm not sitting around waiting to do that. It usually takes me by surprise. I'm like, boy, what are you doing that for? Just now I got to pop you. But then we go right back to he's my boy or she's my girl. Right? God, he wants us free enjoying life and enjoying who he is. Amen? Guys, the, we've heard these sermons before, and I don't even really know why I'm preaching this one really, this morning, but it sounds good to me. But I do know why I'm preaching it, but I'm, what I'm saying is uh, this is not going how I intended. But uh, God, we need to be convinced of the life that he's given us. And listen, if you're yearning to do things that are unclean, right, and you feel in bondage because of that, you don't know what liberty is. See, you don't know what freedom is. If you're wanting to live sinful or do something you shouldn't do, or you're being told by your pastor, your elders, or pe holy people around you, whatever the case may be, your neighbor who's more holier than you, I don't know. You know, you know that old saying, well, you just think you're holier than that. Well, you might be. 
You might be living better than them, and they, they're just convicted by your presence, right? But what I'm, what I'm saying is, is that if you're, you know, if those are the kinds of things you're looking to be free in, in sin, well, listen, if you're looking for that, you're in bondage already. And you're not, if you get in that sin, you're not going to be free. You're going to be in bondage. I've been on both sides of this coin. I mean, you could be sitting in here today and be on both sides of this coin, right? But when I lived in the world, I wasn't trying to live right. I was doing what I wanted to do. And it was bondage. I was miserable all the time. I, I could never be satisfied. I, I was never, uh, I remember those days. <laughs> you know, I tell this to the guys in prison sometimes. I do prison ministry. One of the statements I've made to them, I say, you know, you would think a guy doing whatever he wants whenever he wants to be happy. But I wasn't. I did whatever I want whenever I want. Nobody told me what to do back then. I just did whatever I want. But I was in bondage. I was miserable. I was never happy. So if, if, if you're thinking that getting to do things the world does sinfully is freedom, you're badly mistaken. You're badly mistaken. I'm going to say that again. You're badly mistaken. There's no freedom and liberty in worldliness and ungodliness. It, it brings bondage after bondage after bondage after bondage. So a lot of us can testify to that. Right? A lot of us know what that feels like. But there's nothing like being free in God. Man, I'm telling you. Being filled with the joy of the Holy Ghost, filled with the life of God working in you and through you. Just glad. Seeing the sun come up in the morning. Praise God. Here we, here we go again. Amen. Watching the sun. You know, there's, when you're right with God, you just sit, man, everything's just wonderful. There's things going on. Everything's not perfect. Don't misunderstand. You're always going to be going through something. We're always going to be dealing with things. But that joy sustains you. And I, me personally, I hate to see Christians bound. There's no reason for it. I want my children to enjoy life. I want them to enjoy being my son, my daughter. Amen. I want them to enjoy this. And that's what God has given to us, freedom and liberty. Now, anybody hearing this that it's for sin makes you free or you can be free to sin is wrong. There's a lot of people teaching that today. Oh, we can drink, we can carry on, we can swap wives, that we're free, we're not under the law anymore. No, you're nuts is what you are. And, and you're, you're, you know, you're on your way to hell probably. You, you, you're deceived. You think you're a part of the church and you're not. Because you, you don't look like God when you live and think like that. Amen. And so, you know, there's people teaching that today that, that, uh, hey, we're not under the law anymore, so you don't have to follow any of these rules. Well, when you're right with God, you don't want to do those things. When you're right with God, you don't want to chase sin. It makes you sick. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you know, some of you know what I'm talking about. A lot of you know what I'm talking about. When you're right with God, something just, man, that just ain't right. It just grieves you. Amen. You know, that's why God said, hey, I'm gonna, uh, I want to write my laws on your heart. He's not looking at us walking around dotting all the I's, crossing all the T's. It's not what he's looking for. He's looking for the perfect law of liberty to be written in our heart. Yes, Amen. That I'm just doing right because it's, in, it's what's in my heart. I'm just serving him and obeying him because it's what's in my heart. I'm just forgiving you because it, he's in my heart. And that's what he does. Amen. Amen. Be ye kind one toward another. Tenderhearted. Forgiven one another. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. That's what's in your heart. Amen. See, God wants his liberty, his freedom written on the pages of our heart, as we would say. Yeah. Right? Not to sound philosophical or anything, but, or, or whatever that is. But he just wants that, that, he wants that freedom and liberty in us. And I was going to kind of pick up a little bit on what Pastor was talking about on Wednesday night, facades. God doesn't want that for any of us. He doesn't want us to have to, have to put on, any, it's miserable to have to carry on a facade. To think that I've got, you know, okay. It's different. I'm an elder here, so I should live a certain life that, that, that is upstanding in front of you, right? You know, I, sh I should do that. And th but that's not me having to carry on a facade. That's me just walking with God and just looking like an elder in the church should, right? That's, that's what that looks like. But a real facade is exhausting. And uh, some people, I'm convinced, they're so exhausted, they don't even know it. It's just all they know how to do because they just go through every day with this facade and that's misery that's misery and that's not that's not the spirit of god at all the bible says that where the spirit of god is there's liberty there's freedom 
my wife, I don't want her to have to come home and put on some pretense for me. Do you? I mean, do you want to live like that? No, I don't either. But uh, that is not what God has for us. He wants us to be free, to walk in the spirit, to, to uh, the Bible talks about the perfect law of liberty, the perfect law of freedom in Galatians. He wants us to be free to live that way and not, uh, you know, beat up and condemned our whole life. He wants us free to walk with him so that we don't have a need to put on a facade. We don't have a need to be something we're not. Amen. God is interested in us being who we are in him, walking with him every day of our lives. And uh, the way we do that is we just simply walk with him. We just simply obey him. We just simply serve him. We just simply chase him. Uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says, we'll turn, over, turn to Galatians chapter 5 if you would. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You know, that's, sin brings that bondage, right? And God has delivered, He came to set us free to be free from sin and bondage. So sometimes people are in bondage just because of sin. You know, you, you can be in bondage and you cannot be free because you're, you're, you, you have people as an idol more than you do God. Do you see that? See, sometimes the reason we can't be free around people is because they're more of an idol to us than God is. They're more real to us than God is. So we get around them, we have to put on an air, airs. We have to put on a facade. We have to make them think we're this, that, and the other, but that's not the will of God. God wants us, he, he, notice, stand fast, stand strong, firm, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Amen. If we're, if we're, if God is our idol, if, you, if we want to say that, if he's our God, the, the more God is your idol, the less people are. The more God is your God, the more you're concerned about him, the less people are. You know, uh, you know, I, as again, I say, I'm an elder here and, and, you know, there's a certain reputation that I have and there's a certain, you know, it is what it is to you and you know what that is, right? And so that's, that's your business. But, you know, if you're not careful, there, if you're not careful, it'll being in a position puts you in a position where you feel like you can't even be real at times. Well, I resist that with all my might. I'm not submitting to it in Jesus name. You, you'll judge me and that's great. And I don't mind you. You might be right. You might be wrong, but God will shake it all out in the end. And we're going, we're going to do our best to honor him and obey him. But you know, I was, uh, I was thinking the, uh, I had Hobie over at the house the other day looking at a truck. I had a truck on order that came in, and uh, we, we were going to look at a piece of property, me and Tammy and the kids, and a piece of property that we had bought last, whatever it was, fall or something, I don't know. And, um, and so we get out there, and I, me and Carter, we're going to go off in the woods, right? And we're going to walk this property, because it's getting close to deer season, and if I've still got it by then, we're going to hunt on it. Yeah, that's what we do. And, and so we get there, and we... <laughs> Me and Carter go off out in the woods, and I come back, and uh, we, we take a while. We come back, and I could look over, and Tammy's standing there like this. And, um, honey, she, honey, what, babe? What is it? Uh, I can see the terror on her face. She, she don't want to tell me. She's like, uh, babe, um, Cannon uh, threw a rock and hit your truck. probably ought to take cannon down the road <laughs> when, uh, uh, <laughs> um, and so I said is it bad she said <laughs> <laughs> she knows me and he, she knows that even if it's not probably that bad to me it's gonna be bad right because that's the way we are you know especially new things and and I'm, I'm thinking I don't want to go see this I don't even want to walk. She, it's over, she's, you know, you walk around. The, I'm, I'm thinking, I, I don't even want to go around there. I don't want to. So I walk around there, and I see where, where the rock landed. Now, now, keep in mind, he did not throw the rock at the church. It hung onto his hand. He was trying to throw it over in the grass, and it slung around and hit the, because he was throwing them different directions. You know, he's, he's a, a kid, right? 
And I, I look at that. I look at that truck. And I look at her. And I look at that. And I look at her. And I said, how do you let this happen? How do you let him throw rocks up here around a brand new truck? How do you let this happen? Right? At that time, I wasn't too happy. I was, the joy wasn't working. <laughs> you ever been there? And so I got mad. I said, how do you let him stand here and throw rocks? The first thing you ought to do is tell him to stop throwing rocks around this brand new truck. Babe, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, babe. You know, I said, all right. She's never in trouble with me more than 20 seconds. Anyway, she, I love her so much. <laughs> I, learned, I get over it quick, don't I, babe? And uh, so, so she knows how to melt me, too, these women. I'm telling you, they know what, they know what they're doing. And, and so, so I'm mad at Cannon. We get in the truck. We're driving home. And it wasn't that bad, okay? But to me, it was, brand new, it was, mad, it was bad. I'm like, mm, boy. We're driving. I'm so mad at Cannon. I can't even start praying. Getting, I'm serious. Get in the truck. We're driving. I'm mad at him. I'm like, you little punk, you. I'm, that's, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Driving down the road. We're, we get in the truck. We're driving back up. We get out on Hillham Highway. It took me about five. I'm, I'm going to say it's probably five minutes. I start praying. Worshiping God, praying. And my mind starts rehearsing all the things I did when I was a kid. You ever done that? You ever done that? I, I, my mind, listen, I've done some things, I mean, they shouldn't have been done. I mean, it's embarrassing to even talk about now. I'm thinking, how stupid of a kid was I? I mean, how, 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 how bold and brazen was I as a kid? I shot my brother's car window out one day on, on purpose. And, you know, uh, and I made up a lie about and got out of it. You know, I don't remember getting beat for that, but I did. And I start thinking about all the things that I did as a kid. Um, <laughs> can I tell you a quick story? You guys like these stories? You kids don't get any ideas. Don't be as dumb as Mr. Chad was. Please. Please don't be as dumb as Mr. Chad. I, I don't know. I just, I, I wasn't trained right, I guess, is the best way to say it. You kids have no excuse. Any young, I was younger than all of you because you aren't in children's church. I don't want to get in trouble with any parents in here. Y'all be <laughs> calling me. But I was put in charge of cleaning out some classrooms when I was a kid out at Rickman School one time. My teacher had no idea how cantankerous I was or how they had no idea what levels I would go to. And I don't know why. I don't, you asked me, why did you do that? I don't know. I, after I tell you this story, I don't know why I did it. Still embarrassing. We tore every ceiling in those classrooms out. Drop ceiling. You think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I talked to the other guys. I said, this is what they want. They want this demo demolished in here. We're going to take it. We tore every ceiling in or out and drug it out and threw it out and back. And I thought, and I think now I go, you were crazy. You weren't just, that's crazy. And the teacher shows up. You can imagine the looks on their face too, my men teachers. Well, needless to say, I didn't get to lead any other cleanup projects. <laughs> After, after that. I was a little kid. I was like 11. Our 11-year-olds are more mature than I was. Praise God, they've been raised in God's house. But, uh, but I, I got thinking about these things. I'm driving home, and I'm thinking about Cannon. I'm, I look over to Tammy. I said, ah, he, he's just a kid. He didn't mean to do it, you know. <laughs> and then Hobie comes over working on it. I told Hobie, I said, I was so mad at Cannon. I'm telling you, I, I was punch that kid in the nose, right? No. No, but... Why, why am I telling that story? I don't know. It's just a good story, fun story. No, no, but we can be real. I don't have to pretend like I wasn't mad at him over that because I was. I don't have to put on a facade to you like, oh, yeah, I can't believe you got mad at a four-year-old. Well, too bad. I did. <laughs> right? Why? Because we're real people. God is not interested in me uh, pretending like to Tammy that I'm not, oh, honey, I'm just so happy with this ding in my truck. Uh, yeah. I, I'm just so glad that you let this happen today. Bless God. <laughs> Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I rejoice in all these uh, persecution. No, I wouldn't persecute. All these, <laughs> 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 all these, 
all these, all this tribulation I'm going through. Right? No, no, I was mad, and bless God, you're going to see it when I am right then at that time. Now, I control it because, you know, I've grown up some, a little bit. But my point is, in the church, if we're not careful, some of us are so consumed, we can't even be real. You can't even act like anything. you didn't like something. <laughs> don't ask me if I like something or not if you don't really want to know. Because you'll know, you'll hear. We, you know, we, we don't want, these facades ruin our lives. We get around people and we have to, you get around this group, you got to be like this. You get around this, you got to be like that. And over here, you like this. And that's exhausting, isn't it? But no, the Bible says God has made us free. Look, if you're clean and right with God, there's no reason for you to be in bondage. You should not be in bondage. We should not be in bound up if you're right with God. If you're living right and serving Him, you should not be in bondage. Do you hear what I'm saying? You, we need to hear that. Serving God does not make you bound up. Serving God does not make you miserable. Religion does. Man-pleasing does. Right? But walking with God does not. Walking with God makes you free. Right? Right? You know, I think of my grown children, they, they do whatever they want in life. They do things, and I don't care. They don't have to please me. They, they do whatever they want to do. I don't care. Doesn't affect, they're not doing what they're doing based on pleasing me, I don't think, because they do whatever they want. <laughs> I don't think they care what I think, and that's good. Right? Why? Freedom. God wants us to be free because that's why he came is to set us free. So this message this morning, I guess, is on freedom and joy and getting facades off of our lives, right? Yeah. You know, it'd be good for some people to do just as the old saying goes, just start letting your hair down a little bit. Just a little bit here and there. If you do it all at once, maybe it's too much for you or too much for the people around you or whatever. I don't know. But just a little bit, start that old saying, let your hair, just be yourself. Amen. Just be free. Amen. Just be real. Yeah. Just enjoy life. If you don't like the meal, tell your wife you don't like it. That's all right. Well, you shouldn't hurt her feelings. No, she should be mature enough to handle the fact that I don't like the way it tastes. We're not babies. Huh? You like this dress? Not really. How about you wear that other one? Huh? See, we, we're in bondage to all different kinds of things in life, and we shouldn't be. God doesn't want us to be. Honey, I don't like that dress. That's not my deal. I don't, I don't prefer that. You're holding up two. I like this one better. Wear this one. And my wife will say, well, I'm going to wear which one I want to anyway. And that's all right. <laughs> Why? Because she's not in bondage to me. If she wants to wear this one because it's more comfortable, she's going to wear it. I tell, another funny story. I, I tell you guys sometimes, I, I don't know what it is, but sometimes I don't see colors right. I don't, I don't know. I can't answer it. I'm never confident in what I'm a lot of times I'm just not confident in what I'm picking, especially if it's certain colors. And so this morning, I came out of the closet with, <laughs> this is so funny. This, honest to God, happened this morning. I came out of the closet. I said, babe, what do you think about this? You know? And uh, I had a, a shirt and a tie and a jacket. And <laughs> she said, no, babe, don't do that. You know? And then and, and she said, you know, the first thing I thought when you came out of the closet with that, and I said, what? She said, you know how clowns mismatch on purpose? <laughs> She said, you know how they wear stuff like that on purpose because it's going to look stupid? She said, that's the first thing I thought of when you came out. And man, if I didn't have any confidence before, I sure don't now, you know, you know, in this. But that's honest to God truth. I come out and I'm thinking, hey, this, this goes, this looks pretty good. This, this goes with that and that. And she said, no, she came in here and redone it for me. So here you go. This, my wife, she done... She done this this morning because I would have been up here looking like Bozo, I guess. <laughs> I need some juggling balls. But, you know, she's not in bondage. She can tell me the truth. She, she's not afraid of me like that. She, she knew any better she wouldn't, man. No, no I'm just kidding. But, she, but we, we should not be bound up around people. We need to be free in God, free to be who you are, free to enjoy your life. You know, I just when, when I see some of you guys out in town, I don't get in bondage. I ain't worried about nothing. I'm glad to see you. Amen. 
I don't have to put on some act for you because I was the same way before you got there. See, when you're free in God and you're right with God, you're the same person everywhere you go. It, it doesn't matter where you're at. You're the same guy. You're the same gal. You're the same person. That, that's a quick way to know if you're right with God or not. If you're free in this area, do you have to change who you are depending on where you're at? If you do, you need to get right with God. You need to get him to help you. You need to, number one, you need to be honest. You need to be honest and say, you know what? I put on airs. I put on facades. I put on facades at times. I, I change. I'm a chameleon. I'm, I'm a little bit this. Or I have this reputation. I I'm, I'm have to be this. Or I have to be. You know, we've all seen people that, hey, nothing wrong with nice clothes, dressed nice. I like nice stuff. I have some nice stuff. Some people have way nicer stuff than me, and I'm thinking, man, I wouldn't have paid that. But then there's people who have less than me, and they're like, I wouldn't have paid what you did, right? That's just it's relative. Uh, but but I like nice stuff, and you know. I, I, I like, I'm probably not a snazzy dresser. I don't know. Dr. C is. He's good at it. He, he's got real good taste and all that stuff. Uh, but, but, you know, we've all seen people, they have that air. This, that, that's just who they are. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's just their, their clothes make the man, you know. Clothes make the woman. But they, they've got this persona they have to carry around. Well, a persona, if you're having to act a way, that means you're not really it. Yeah. Right. See? You know, we've all seen the women, you know, <laughs> we're going, we're going to the gym now. And, you know, some of the women, they're just, they're just, they're just, you just, it's who they are. They're consumed with this thing. It'd be nice to them just relax, you know, and just be, have some, let some of the tension go. Right. Some of the guys, I go in there and I talk to everybody because I'm, you know, I try to fellowship with everybody. Some people get mad at me because I'm taking their time. I would work out more if Chelsea Vincent would leave me alone while I'm there. <laughs> But no, but my point is, if you're having to pretend something, then that's not really who you are. If you some, but here's the problem. Sometimes we're so self-deceived that we don't even realize we're doing it because it's just the way we do. We just automatically go into that. That's bondage. That's misery. We, that is not liberty. That's not freedom. And that's in that area, you're not where God would have you to be. Do you see that? God is not looking for some perfect picture that we can draw up and we can form. God, this pleases you now, right? Look, my chin's in the right spot. My, you know, the, see, if we're not careful, we live that way. We live like there's just some perfect mold we got to fit into. No, when, when you're filled with the joy of the Lord and you walk with God, you're different than everybody around you. You don't have to pretend to be different. You're just who you are. Yes, sir. Amen? You're just who you are because that's who God made you to be. And these, these facades, are, are they're exhausting. And I wanted to hit on something a little bit this morning. If you can listen to the heart of what I'm saying. You hear pastors say that a lot. That... Uh, if we can listen and hear the heart of what we're saying, there's a big difference in a, a facade because you're, you don't want people to see the real you or you, don't, you, know, you, can't let, you can't be real. There's a big difference in that and then you walking and acting like you know you should by faith because you know it pleases God. Do you understand that? There's a big difference. Uh, I've been at, in the workforce in my life. I've been around people at different times that I walked and act differently around them. I did what the Apostle Paul said. I became all things to all people. Why? Because of where they were. Yes. Not to be a chameleon. I wasn't insecure at all. I didn't need to fit in with them. I needed to be something that they could accept so that I could help them. You understand that? There's a big difference in that and then living a facade because you're, you don't want people to see the real you. There's, there's a big difference. We can walk by faith in something different. You can, you can go up and be nice to people that you don't like and in your heart you know you don't like them and you don't want to be nice to them, but you can do that by faith to please God, not to pretend in front of them. See, that's why it's so important. Everything we do is about our heart and what's coming out of our heart. Or is the, is the air, is the facade because you, you're, you're scared, you pretend, you want people to think something that you're not? Or is it because you love God, you love people, and you want to do what is right? Have you ever done that? You, you know, sometimes I think of, uh, I was actually telling a story at the nurse home this morning preaching. And um, 
you know, we, we do what we do for the people we're around. And if we're doing that in the love of God and we're becoming what they need, that's not fakery. That's not facade that is walking in love with them being more mature than them not not to hold you know uh, we have to be so careful pride is such a a sneaky thing well I'm more mature than you so I act like this no no you you should be coming out of a pure heart of love for uh, for God and for those precious people that you want to be able to help those people and not something so that I can look like something to you or you can look like something to me It, it there's that's why two things can look exactly the same and be totally different. Why? Because it's coming from a different heart. There's a different reason behind it. There's a different motivation behind it. Is that right? You know, you can correct your kids because you love them, you're concerned for them, and you're, you, know, you're, you have a, 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 a godly reverence that if you don't fix this in them, they'll, they'll, something's going to m- manifest in them over time that's going to hurt their life. You can do that because it's right and because you love them, or you can do that just because they're getting on your nerves and you're just being rude, right? The correction may look the same, but the motivation is different. And it's the same thing with a, with a facade or, you know, it's, it's not, listen, it's not fake of you to walk up and be nice to people that you don't like just because you want to please God. That's not fake. That's actually walking by faith. You know, the, the scripture, Romans 4, 17, um, again, you know, in, in charismatic type circles, these scriptures have been taken so far out of bounds that they're used wrong all the time. But it's the scripture that talks about that God calls things that be not as though they were. Well, he's God and I'm not. Okay, I can't do everything he can do, and I can't call everything something that he can, and I can. So this just got it gets so far in a ditch. Okay, but there is a principle there that we can use by faith. We can act like we don't feel like acting by faith because we know it pleases our heavenly Father. We can treat people, even though look, well, I'm not acting that way because I don't feel like it. Well. I don't feel like doing a lot of things, but the, the, the thing is, are we wanting to please God? Do we want to be right with him? See, it's not about, well, I don't like you. Well, you may not, but, and that's good. If you don't, maybe, you, you know, maybe there's a point, maybe <laughs> there's a time to say that or let somebody know that or do it in private or whatever, right? And probably not because most people can't handle that. You tell them, hey, I don't like you. And, you, and I do that for fun, right? I like to tell people, hey, you know, I never have liked you. you know, I do that with Brother Luke. Brother, Brother Eddie knows it's true, though. I never, you know, he can ha- he's tough. He can handle all that I dish out. He dishes out a lot himself. But, see, the, the, the thing is, it's the heart of why we're doing what we're doing, the motivation of why we're doing what we're doing, and not what you're actually doing. Do you see that? Now, that in and of itself gets perverted by people. Well, you know, uh, you know, we're we're living together, and you know, well, God knows our heart. Yeah. We take if we're not careful, we take everything out of bounds, yeah. don't we? You know, the name and claim it. I'm just calling it all in. I call this wallet full in Jesus' name. I call things that be not as though they were. Well, go out and get a job, and it might eventually get full, yeah. right? Let's have some reality about us. Let's have some. You know, we we take everything. If we're not careful, we take it in ditches everywhere we go. But we can, you know, if, if I don't like you, I can walk up with a perfect heart right before God, be good to you and love on you and treat you right because it pleases my heavenly father. And I'm trying to train my heart to love you even though it doesn't. And you can do that by faith, even though it's not in that position. And people say, well, I don't believe in that name and claim. So, well, I agree with you on most of it. I don't believe in most of it either because most of it I've ever seen didn't work anyway. So listen, either it works or it don't. Right? If we're not seeing a product here, then believe it all you want. You ain't getting it. Because I like to deal in reality. I like to deal in the real world. Amen? But there is a principle. We can, we can do things by faith even though... It's not there yet. We can believe God to get it there. I've done this many times in my life. That's exactly what, see, that's why we don't, we don't want to let the fact that someone, some group has destroyed some scripture and have horrible doctrine 
do away with the true principle here that God has for us in any passage, in any scripture. We don't want to make that mistake. We don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right? We don't want to do that because we want to be able to partake of, of the goodness of God that God intended. And, uh, but that, that's exactly what Hebrews 11 tells us. Now faith, Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance, the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, faith, see, if we're not careful, we'll throw that whole tub of water out. But that's exactly what Romans 4, 17 is. It's, it's just a little different facet. You're believing God for something you don't have yet. Amen. And the best way to, and that's what that verse says. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You don't have it yet, but you're believing God for it. You don't have it yet. You don't love them like you should, but you know you should, and you're believing God to love them. Like you should. That it takes faith to do that. It takes faith to get around people you don't like and be good to them. What, right? We know the Beatitudes. Jesus, what Jesus said, what he said to do. Do good to those that hate you. Love those that despitefully use you and abuse you. Right? That's what Jesus said. I'm going to take his side and say, oh, Lord, you're right. Doesn't mean I like it, but it's right. It's correct. And we can do that. See, that's not a facade to do that. Because you're wanting to please God. You're wanting, your faith is, Lord, I want to do what is right. I want to be right with you, and I can change. Uh, you know, I think about over the years in my Christian walk, there's people that you meet, you just don't like them. You ever done that? You just, it's not even, the, you know, I realized, I thank God for growing, listening to a pastor growing and developing in the word of God and changing literally. I, I'm so thankful for that. Because I think back years ago, when I first got in church, if, 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 I did, if somebody wasn't my flavor, they wasn't my style, they didn't, I didn't like their personality, I just was like, man, this guy's an idiot, this guy's an idiot, just leave me alone, get away from me, don't come. It's what my attitude was. Now, I didn't say that a lot of times. Sometimes, I, you know, it just depends on what time you caught me, what you asked me. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't say or do that necessarily. But my point is, I thought the problem was them. I thought the problem was them. No, the problem wasn't them. The problem was the bias and prejudice I had in my heart. And I'm not talking about race or color. Don't go there. That's not at all what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just toward their personalities, their character, the way they were. I, I met people and I'd be like, man, I don't like this dude. Every time he comes around, I'm like, get away from me. Yeah. Right? You know, I'm not going to name any names, Eddie. But no. <laughs> I love Brother Eddie. Me and Brother Eddie have such a fun time. We teach children's church together. We pick on our wives together. I don't know how our wives put up with it. They're strong. But the, uh, you know, there, there was... I first met somebody here, and it's been many, many, many years ago, so now y'all know who it is. I just didn't like them. Didn't like them at all. It's like, man, I, here they come, I'm going that way. Right? You ever been there? Yes. I can honestly tell you that, to this day, I don't, I don't have that about me anymore yeah. with people, in, in, in just in general. And I'm thinking because of real change, real growth, right. walking with God. And we can, we can grow in this. But you know... I was walking with God, serving God, just kept growing. It wasn't long. I loved, I just fell in love with them. I did. I just, I just fell in love with them. It's like, I just love this person, you know, and I could, I wanted to be around them and love to see them come put a big smile on my face. But that was the total opposite of when I first met them. And you know, it didn't take forever. It didn't take long for that to happen. What was happening, Chad was changing. My heart was changing. I, I, I inside me, I knew that that I wasn't right. And, and we, if we're not careful, we want everybody else around us to change. Well, that's not the will of God. The will of God is for you to change. The will of God is for you to grow and be able to tolerate them. Amen? I don't even know why I'm talking about that now. But, but see, if, if you're not right with God, see, you, now I do. If you're not right with God, you, you'll do that putting on a facade when you don't like somebody just because you, you're scared that the real you, they're going to find out. See, it's two, it's two different things. You can do it in the will of God and in faith, 
because you're wanting to love them and you have compassion for them and you want to obey God or you can do it because I can't let them know I don't like them. I'm a Christian I can't let them know that uh, that that I hate them <laughs> right these facades number one they're miserable they're 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 a tremendous burden and I don't I don't like them I don't like it at all I like being free freedom there's nothing better than freedom in life nothing better than freedom in God and pastor was talking to us on Wednesday night about these facades and how the Lord was dealing with him about it uh, at prayer that day and uh, if, if I find the way I am you know us elders we're supposed to be representative to you and we're you know and, and we're supposed to you're supposed to you know as pastor said we're supposed to be something that you would look forward to I hope you look at me and my wife's marriage and would like a marriage like that I I mean, we love each other. We, we, you know, she's not perfect, but you know, we're getting there and we're working on it. But my point is the way I am, if I see that I've got a little bit of a facade about me or something, it, it'll just drive me up the wall. I'll, I'll just be like, man, I'm fixing this. I'm going to burn this to the ground. I'm going to get the hammer out. I'm going to break this thing. I'm going to beat this down. Why? Because I'm going to be real with you if my life depends on it. Why? Because I can't stand the bondage of it. Yeah. I can't sleep at night knowing that 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 there's something that, that I'm not genuine with you, that I'm not that I'm not genuine and right with God. Yeah. See, we can do this in our walk with people. We you know, I had something hap- I had something happen the other day and it just really took me by surprise and caught me out in left field uh, with the person. And it, it hurt my heart, to be honest with you. And um it hurt my feelings a little bit, you know, um, if we want to say that, you know, it just kind of hurt my heart because of how close I feel to them. And um, I was shocked by what they said to me, and it kind of hurt my heart. And so I had to make a determination after that that I wasn't going to let that cause me to be bitter, unforgiven toward them and, and treat them wrong. I, had to, I went immediately started working on my heart. See, that's what God wants out of us. He wants, immediate, he wants the examination, examining yourself. Don't let yourself fall into these things because somebody does something to you. Don't let bitterness set up in your heart. Don't let these things set up in your, your mind. Even, it doesn't matter how wrong they are. Don't, don't let that happen. And, and so I, the more I, I, I would work on that, I, I would let God examine me. And the more I would, I would see, you know, I can do this better. I don't need to do this. I need to respond like this. Because, see, if you're willing to hear from God and the Word of God and His Spirit of God, He'll be able to talk to you. To be able to show you these things. And then you don't have to put on a facade. Now, I can get around that person the next time. I can be 100% honest with them and say, look, I, uh, if it's brought up, I can say, hey, you know, I just don't think you're right about this. And I don't think you did this right. And, um, but still love them and not, and not be mad, not be bitter, not have division over it. See, when, when we're genuine and we really let God deal with us, that produces freedom and liberty and there's no facade needed there's no facade needed and that's what that's what god wants for us he some sometimes we have a facade put up because all week long god is dealing with us on something we're not listening we don't want to hear it we he's trying to show us how we are he's trying to get us to let our hair down you understand what i mean by that He's trying to, I don't mean that the way the world sees that. They're talking about going out and partying and carrying on. That's not at all what I mean. I just mean being the real you and being free. And hey, if some, you know, you said that to me and it hurt. You, you said that to me, it hurt my feelings, it bothered me. You said that, uh, uh, you know, I didn't like that you said that to me because you're a real person. Amen. But when we're really obedient to God and, and, and we're listening to him, there, there, there's no need for a facade because you really deal with it and you really grow. The facade comes when we're not really growing. God wants to deal with us, but we're not letting him properly. And that, that stunts our growth and produces this fake thing because I'm religious and I'm a Christian and look at me smile. And in the heart is black. And God is not interested in that. And we need to be careful that we don't, you know, us older Christians, we don't need to exhibit that to younger Christians and make them feel like that that's how you know, they look up to us, right? We don't want them to think, hey, this is what Christianity looks like, because it doesn't. It produces a fakery. 
Amen. And God's not interested in that for any of us. He wants, when we're hurt, he wants us to know we're, he, we can talk to him about it. If, if some, you know, if you can't, you know, if you're married and you can't be intimate like that, good grief. Something's real bad wrong there. Amen. And that's not the will of God. It's, uh, it's, he wants us free. And, and I, my, th- th- I, this was just on my heart pretty strongly. I want to emphasize this. And we'll close with this. But you may be a type person who has fallen into more of that than others, more given to that. And you may have to really shake yourself. You may have to really just shake yourself and, say, and wake up and say, well, this is what I, I do this. This is how I live. This is what I do. So that you can start to come out of it. Because it's, you, it is miserable to live an entire life based upon fakery and facades. Things that, that's not real. That's a miserable way to live. And we, you may have to just shake yourself out of it. And hear it. And, and you know, sometimes I know how the, the, the Word of God works. Sometimes I remember this from years ago. I've trained my heart now. It doesn't do this anymore. But years ago, when, when the preaching would start to touch something, my heart, mm, yeah. you ever been there? Yes. Yes. Your heart just, ah, don't, don't go, the, don't, blah, 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 don't, <laughs> don't talk about that. Yeah. That's, when, that's exactly when you need to let that down and let the word of God, let the preaching touch you. Right. Let it penetrate that. Yes. Drop that. Yeah. And uh, oh, don't talk about that, don't talk about that. Well, you're not free. And God wants to make you free. And we got to take our fingers out of our ears and let him talk to us. And let him show us what he wants us to see so that we can be shaken by it. Just relax and say, you know what? Bless God, that's me. I've been that way for 15 years, 20 years, whatever it is. Father, help me. Father, make me free. Because Jesus came to set us free. And he doesn't get any glory by you being bound up. It doesn't glorify him in any way for you to be bound up or miserable. I, as a father, we'll end with this, I think. As a father, it would make me miserable to think that my children were miserable like that, that they were in bondage, that they had to pretend. They had to be, no, I want them to be exactly who they are. You know, I was laughing at Caitlin the other day or whenever that was. <laughs> If you ever talk to Caitlin early in the morning, you know she doesn't sound so pleasant sometimes. And it's just who she is. It's just She's not quite there yet or whatever. And Chase knows this, I guess. And, and so Tammy was on the phone with Caitlin, and Tammy's like, are you mad? Caitlin's like, no, I'm not mad. And I said, honey, she just sounds like that early sometimes. <laughs> but she's just genuine. She sees she hasn't come around yet. And hey, it's early and whatever the case may be. You know, I'm the total opposite of that. I wake up wide open. I, w- I wake up bright eyed and bushy tailed. It's just, you know, people are different. But my point is, she doesn't have to put on a facade to, oh, hey, mommy. No, it's early. I'm having to talk to you. I don't really want to talk to you. I'm not mad at you. I just, you know, it's, it's just real. Now, maybe there's something there she could work on, but it's not that big a deal. Right? It'll help us toughen, you know, help people toughen up. They just quit being so offended at every little thing. So touchy. So every little thing, <laughs> good grief. I, you know, every little thing offends us. We're so soft and touchy. We don't want to be that way. We want to be free in God. And I don't want the way, you, you know, people have told me before, you know, <laughs> and I don't even know it. You know, they're like, man, that, that look on your face, it intimidates me. And I'm like, well, I, my kids call it my thinking face. Cade used to say, I remember Cade years ago, I was sitting on the living room couch, and I do this. I get to meditating on something, I'm thinking about it, and I, apparently I get this strong look on my face. And Cade walked by, Dad's got his thinking face on, and just, and just kept on going. Because it's, it's like a funny little, you know, it's just how I am. But people, you look at that, and you're like, man, he's mad about something. I ain't mad at all. I'm just, I got a lot on my mind, you know, right? We don't want to be so touchy like that. We want to be free. And if I'm thinking about something, it probably won't have anything to do with you. <laughs> More than likely. And you the same. Praise God. Has it helped you this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Freedom is a good thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
being free is a good thing. Having the life of God working in us is free. Bondage is no good. If we, if we got nothing else, we get those two things. Freedom is good. Bondage is not. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, bow your heads with me, if you would, uh, this morning. Maybe you're in here this morning and uh, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Maybe you've never asked him um, to be your Savior, to help you, to help uh, teach you how to walk with him and love him. If, you, if you're in here this morning you're not born again, raise your hand. I'd like to pray with you and pray for you. Anybody at all? Give you another minute there. I still remember exactly where I was when I got born again. I can still see it in my mind. Maybe you're in here this morning and every head bowed, every eye closed because we, you know, we're not looking to draw attention to anything. We, we want to help people all that we can. Maybe this morning uh, you realize you're in bondage. You realize you have facades that you live in. You realize that you're not free like you would like to be. You don't have that peace working in you like you would. If you would raise your hand just real quickly. There's one. I see the, that hand. I see that hand. I see those hands. I see, I see that hand. Praise God. God will help us. You know, and it takes, it takes tremendous humility to raise your hand and, and, and thinking somebody might see it and just say, Father, help me. But a few more minutes. Anybody else that... Uh, I see that hand. I see that hand. I got that hand. Praise God. Praise God. That tells me we hit some things that was helping us this morning. Let's, let me pray for you. Father, oh God Almighty, I pray for these precious people. I pray for your grace. You said your grace is sufficient. Father, People pleasing and fear and bondage and all that can be so miserable. There, there's no liberty and freedom in that. And Father, I ask you to help these people where they may be locked up in their mind, where they may be locked up in their heart, where they're, they're in bondage and don't even realize it, where, where they're hurting and don't even realize it. Father, I pray that you give them your grace to recognize these things and to start taking the steps of coming out of it help us father anywhere that we have facades that we have areas that we're not right with you help us to start taking those steps those necessary steps to walk out of that bondage help us all to do it father but help these precious people that raise their hand that need help that need favor give them your grace and your favor cause them to be free because you said you came to set them free Thank you, Lord, for your freedom and your liberty in Jesus' name. Pray, pray with me. Say, Father, I thank you that you've called me unto freedom, unto liberty, that it's your desire that I be free. Father, I thank you that I will partake of your freedom. I will walk in your graces. I'll walk in your liberty and enjoy life. Father, thank you for helping us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, guys, that's all I have this morning. Uh, we'll be back tonight for a night of worship tonight. That'll be good. Uh, that's a good place to get some freedom in God's presence and worship him. And uh, just, I, I like to get in the presence of God and just get close to him. Just let him say whatever he wants. Let him do whatever he wants. Let, let him minister whatever he wants to me. Because we should, we, guys, we don't, we, we should never fear that. Because there's no free, there's freedom like you've never known to let God deal with you and just say, yes, sir, as you say, sir, say on. Whatever you say, Lord. There's no freedom like that. Amen. So we're going to do that tonight. We're going to come for a night of worship and give God what he deserves. It's, they call it a sacrifice. The Bible calls it a sacrifice of praise for a reason. Because you have to sacrifice your laziness. Your time, standing on your feet, lifting up your voice, and you don't feel like doing it. 
Sometimes you do, but sometimes you don't. But it is a sacrifice. Amen. So we're going to come worship him tonight. We'll see you guys tonight. Prayer at uh, 530, service at 6. God bless you. Have a good afternoon.